I want to begin by acknowledging that I'm joining Nasus in the Cloud from the territory of the Abenaki, of the Wabanaki Confederacy and of the Pocumtic, especially this week, which began in what is currently the United States with Indigenous Peoples Day and at a conference about understanding and communicating about place. I want to thank the folks behind Native Land for helping me understand a little bit better where I am. So I'm going to talk about creating the data set. So many of the things that we talk about at NASIS are about creative and beautiful and thoughtful ways to communicate about spatial data. But first we need to have the data to display in some way. I'm going to talk about what I was trying to do initially, what gets obscured, what data there is, what I did to find some more data, what I noticed along the way, and then what comes next now that I've assembled this data set. I started out by wanting to see where all of the post offices in the country are. This is part of an ongoing project started before the Postal Service became quite so timely and before the utility of the Postal Service became daily breaking news. The only problem was that I could not find an easily available data set. I've been slightly concerned as I've been planning for this talk that somebody right afterwards will say, oh, it's available from, and then I'll realize that I'm really not that good at searching. So one side uh, point I want to make before continuing is that um, something I've been thinking about throughout this process and that I want to emphasize at the beginning is how much is missing in any data set we use whether we get the information from an API or go out and assemble it ourselves. Some of this missingness is in the data and some of it is in our understanding about the data, no matter how thorough the documentation. Using the framing of Lauren Klein and Catherine D'Ignazio, I want to focus on two principles they lay out in data feminism, considering context and making labor visible. Among other things, the work of considering context is about understanding what the data set actually includes and making sure that we don't accidentally treat one type of data as a proxy for another. Or if we do, we're very careful about how we're doing that. Making labor visible is about understanding who built this, who compiled the data, who double checked it, who asked to have it compiled in the first place. For me, this is both about giving credit and about taking responsibility. It's a reminder that any CSV we download was made by people. For this project, I'm coming in partway through in some ways. As I will get to in a moment, I started from data available from the United States Postal Service or USPS. I took their data and then made something else out of it. I can ask questions about these practices much more than I can provide answers. Much of what I worked with uh, was from a data source where there wasn't somebody to ask about the context. And there wasn't any transparency about whose work I was building upon. From the visibility that I can add about my own process, I think it will highlight how easily the missing parts and the work and the questions can be obscured by some nicely structured data at the end. So what is available? Sarah Bell, who is presenting later today, is also using postal data and solve this in a different way. So as I was looking, uh, Richard Halbach, an enthusiastic postal historian, has compiled an eight volume set of books listing the names of all the postal post offices and their operating years. So name of post office, location, dates of operation, and then a code about how rare the cancellation code from that post office is. These books are not current, they are incredibly comprehensive in some ways, but they also lack details like where is the Allendale Post Office in Ottawa, Michigan? It just gives a jurisdiction, but it doesn't give any actual address. I know of Hellbach's work because I read a paper that cited Cameron Blevins geography of the post project and he relied on Hellbach's data in which uh, Blevins and some others show the openings and closings of post offices west of the Mississippi between 1846 and 1902. The data behind the project is available, but that only got me to 1902 and only west of the Mississippi, so that wasn't going to help me either. 
after I was already partway through the post office, the street view of every post office account started on Twitter. And I wrote to the person behind it to ask what source they were using, but I never heard back. I was hoping that there was a nice geojson of all the post office addresses someplace that I could start from, or at least compare to what I'd been creating. The USPS themselves has a page of past postmasters, including my great grandmother who served in the 1930s and 1940s. While the listed openings and closings of post offices are fascinating, the data is incomplete at a, as pointed out often on the page itself. Because this data is about what places had a postmaster, all of Albany, New York is encompassed in one post office opened in 1775. This is where it is important to consider context. The list on the left, I, which may be too small to see, is labeled post offices by state at the top, but it's really not about post offices, it's about postmasters. And so it is not exactly what I'm looking for either. So what did I actually end up doing? I used the USPS uh, find by location search and automated a search for all of the zip codes from 0000 to 9999. I cleaned up the results, I took out duplicates, I geocoded the addresses, and I opened the CSV in QGIS. A note, this quick recitation condenses weeks and weeks of work. The scraping ran in chunks over a couple of weeks alone. In some ways, this is all of the work. I made a data set. But this is also the uninteresting part between making decisions about the data and getting to use it now that I have it. All of what I've talked about here, the searching through other people's work, the haphazard Python I use to clean up the data, none of that is apparent from the CSV I compiled at the end. I would like a better way to know about the process behind updating the USPS location finder and when post offices are added or removed from that data set. I'm relying on that as sort of my ground truth, but I don't know anything about how reliable that is. I would like a better way to be able to convey what choices I made along the way, what I know about what, uh, what's missing and about what's uncertain. The ability to convey more of this, the work being done would also help to give context for what is and what isn't in this data set. The first time I did this, when I zoomed in, I noticed an open space around Springfield, Illinois. I could go back and rerun the zip codes between 6200 and 6300, but I wouldn't have noticed that if the visual were slightly less apparent. It also means that if there were, there's a place where I'm missing some zip codes that isn't such a hole, I won't know. I can go back and pull those zip codes again. This is an often great feature of working with geographic data. We have some sense of what it should look like, and so it's pretty easy to tell when we've swapped latitude and longitude, for example. Because I was looking at the text files and didn't get this data set presented as a whole, I noticed a few things, like when the same street address came with two different ID numbers, and those ID numbers come from the, the postal service, it's in there, the back end of what they re return for address searches. And they have very slightly different zip codes. I wish I could ask someone if the Postal Service really considers these to be two sep separate locations for some reason. I'm aware of some of the problems in my data set. I have about 400 fewer post offices than what the USPS uh, site there facts um, page says that there should be 31,322 post offices, and my data set has 30,931. I don't know if that's just a matter of when one option has been updated or the other, whether I missed some places, it's very hard to know. I don't know how current the data behind the post office finder is. I'm trusting Google's geocoding. At each step along the way, I might be missing something and I won't necessarily know. What comes next? Now that I have all 31,000 post offices mapped, what am I going to do with this? In some ways, this is very much a population map. Now that I have the data set, I want to look at where people live furthest from their post office, whether there's a pattern to the places with limited hours, and if there's some correlation between state and postal service 
given that this is a federal service and yet is very place specific. I do want to use the information about openings and closings, limited though it is, to see how this map has changed over the last hundred years, similar to what Cameron did for the first half of the 19th century, for the second half of the 19th century. There are myriad things I want to look into now that the data are assembled, but I also want to include the, not errors exactly, but the incompleteness of this or any data set I'm working with. I know way more about this one having put it together, and I realize how blithely trusting I would have been had this been available as a GeoJSON file someplace. I look forward to working with this data now that I've pulled it all together. I wish I knew more about it, and I hope to be able to include the choices that I've made along the way to the next person to use it so that they understand it a little bit better. Thank you.